Shabbat Shalom Narasli. Today in Parshat Lech Lecha, I want to share with you a familiar story, but for some reason there's an ending to this story that everybody gives, but it's an impossible ending, because if that were the true ending, then nobody would even know that that were the true ending. The story goes like this. There is a fellow who is living in a town where they've been told to evacuate because there is a flood. And this fellow says, you know, I've been living here for years and I'll be fine. You know, I'm a man of faith and God will protect me. And sure enough, the flood waters rise. A car comes along and tries to pick him up. He says, no, God will protect me. Flood waters continue to rise and a dinghy comes along to, says, get in, get in. He says, no, no, God will protect me. Finally, the flood waters are really high. He climbs up to the roof and a chopper says, Grab on, we'll, we'll save you. He says, no, 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 I'm, I'll be fine. God will protect me. Anyway, at this point, the story goes that he dies. Now, that's not a very likely story because if he died, how would we know the end of the story? So what in fact actually happens is that he wakes up in hospital, spluttering, and he says, how, how did I get here? And they say, look, mate, you know, you... You're very lucky to be alive. You almost died. I mean, we found you. We thought you were, you drowned as search and rescue, and we managed to resuscitate you, and here you are. I mean, it's, it's a miracle. He says, wow, wow. You know, wow, I, don't know. I knew God would protect me. So in this week's parish of Lechelcha, we have a number of seemingly bit characters that go along with the journey of Lech Lecha, go for yourself. God says to, to Avram and Sarai, leave your land of Haran, go off to the land of Canaan. And they have these characters that seem to be with them or join them along the way, and we're not quite sure what they're doing there. The first one is Lot. So Lot is Avram, Avram's nephew, and he's there. And our sages have to tell us what he's doing there. At the end of last week's parasha, we have Haran who dies, Lot's father. And so Avram and Sarai kind of adopt Lot and bring Lot with. Now, why is that relevant to our story? It's not so clear. I mean, we have, he appears and he almost seems like a bit of a nuisance. Uh, there he is, his shepherds are arguing with Avram's shepherds. Later, Avram has to save him from a war that Avram really wanted no part of. Later again, uh, he has to be rescued from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And well, what's he doing there? Why is he relevant to our story? The next bit character in the story that somehow seems larger than life or larger than what you would expect from a slave in Avram and Sarah's house is Eliezer. I mean, what's he doing there? Eliezer is is a servant, and it's not very often that we actually know the name of any servant. He is somebody who happens to be in the house and run the house, and, but wh why do we need to know who he is or very much about him, let alone his name? What's he doing there that makes him important to the story? The next one, as we move through the parasha, is we find Avram and Sarai can't have children, and so Sarai says, take my maidservant Hagar, maybe you'll have a child. Sure enough, they have a child, Yishmael, and Yishmael ends up going his own way. He doesn't um, become really a story, a character in our story of the Jewish people long term. He's just gone off and made his, eventually he becomes the father of Islam, obviously uh, some time later. But what's he doing here? Why is he relevant to our story if at the end of the day, he doesn't really become... Avram's child that he always wanted. You know, they still go on to have Yitzchak and yearn for that Yitzchak. So what are these characters doing here in the story? So, I want to, so in order to understand, I want to jump ahead to next week's parasha, and we have the birth of Yitzchak. And Yitzchak's born, and at the end of the parasha, Avram faces the greatest test, the test of the Akedah, of the binding of Isaac. He's told, this child that you've had in your old age, I now want you to take him and offer him up as a sacrifice, which Avram duly does. They go off to Mount Moriah, and he places him on the altar, and he is about to strike 
When the angel said, stop, stop, there was only a test. Stop, I know that you are faithful to me and you are the ultimate man of faith. Now, our sages offer a strange reading here. Our sages tell us, and Rashi brings this, that Avram then says to, to God, well, you know what? Let me at least inflict a little bit of a wound so that I can feel, feel that I fulfilled your dictum. And God says, no, 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 nothing. I said, you know, stop, you've done it, I'm accepting it, and you're good to go, both, both of you go home. Now, just a little bit something, you know, maybe just let a little blood, no, says God. No, 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 you, you have to understand, no, that's, no means I don't want you, I trust you, it's fine. What's happening here? What are Chazal, what are our sages trying to impress upon us? So I think let's take us, ourselves back to the story of the fellow who's standing there in the flood saying, God will protect me. God will save me. I don't have to take the car. I don't have to take the boat. I don't have to take the chopper. And at the end of the day, God does save him, but really was it worth it? They're spluttering in the hospital half dead, almost ha having drowned. I mean, God will ultimately save if we have enough faith. Perhaps this is what happens with Avram. First, Haran, his brother, dies, and Avram turns to his nephew Lot, and he says, Lot, you are like a son to me. You will come with me for the journey. And then there's a bit of a rift between Avram and Lot and their uh, uh, managers, and they part company. Now, would you do that with a child? If you were really your own child, would you say, okay, ta-ta, no, we didn't get along? Of course you wouldn't. If that were your child, if he were everything you'd invested in, you wouldn't just simply say, okay, let's call it a day. So then we have the next stage. We have Eliezer. Eliezer, who presumably would be a bit part, but he becomes like a son to Avram. We know that in our religion, slaves were not just treated like dirt. In our religion, I mean, we see it in the commandment for Shabbat. Everyone in the household needs to keep Shabbat. Avdov, Amato, your servant, your mate. I'm not talking about Jews. Obviously, Jews have to keep Shabbat. But even your non-Jewish servants, they become half Jewish. In fact, when you emancipate them, they become completely Jewish. So they're Jewish in training. They're a member of the household, a member of your family. Eliezer says, I, I always thought that Yitzchak would marry my daughter because I was, we were members of the family. And so God says, Eliezer, here, it didn't work. And we have in this week's parasha where Avram says to, to God, behold, Eliezer is going to be my heir? Now, we read it as, as uh, but perhaps the true meaning is, yes, uh, Avram is saying, you know, seriously, God, are you saying that Eliezer is going to be my heir? I'm, 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 I, that wasn't what I was asking for. And then in the third one, we have Yishmael. God says, and Sarai agrees to have Hagar, mother, the child of Avram. Yishmael is born. And yet, still, Avram is dissatisfied. So every step along the way, God says, Avram, what are you talking about? You asked for a, for a son. You asked for an heir. You asked for someone to continue this legacy. I sent you a lot. I sent you an Eliezer. I sent you a Yishmael. What, what more do you want from me? But, but I want my own child, says Avram. And God says, okay, fine. I, I'll, I'll send you Yitzchak. And then God puts him to the test. And Avram's ready to go further than God had said and, and, and kill this one. And God's like, okay, you know, there's only so many times that this, you're going to be able to continue this because I, I realize you're a man of faith. And I realize that you always think that there will be another child, but please. Because when we have faith, like Avram, there's always going to be a solution. You're always going to know that God will carry you no matter what. All you have to do is heed the word of God and know that God will be there to protect you. And we have another chazal, another idea from our sages, that the two lads that had accompanied Avram and Yitzchak to the Akedah, to the binding, who were they? Eliezer and Yishmael. Like, who cares? 
What difference does it make that it was Eliezer and Ishmael? Answer is, what our sages are telling us is that they are there in the background. They are there as part of the context. They're there as the story to tell us who is Yitzchak, what's happening now, and uh, why is Yitzchak a different ending to the story than the other two? You know, I've been through a bit of a rough patch uh, in this country, apart from Corona, uh, over the last year. Last December, the 12th of December, to be exact, the 14th of Kislev, we did not know the future of our people in this country. Jeremy Corbyn could very well have been elected as Prime Minister of this country, and it would have been terrible news for our people. I don't think any of us even had an inkling of how bad it would have been till the report came out this week. And now that the report came out, what was his response? Remorse? Not even remorse. His response was that it was a report that was dramatically overstated for political purposes. Thank God the Labour Party now has a wonderful leader in uh, Sukhir Starmer. And the Labour Party has rejected, taken away the whip from Jeremy Corbyn and said, no, this is not acceptable. Your conduct wasn't acceptable, and now it's not acceptable either. Ta-ta. So imagine what God is saying to us now. God says, my people, my children, what are you looking for? When will you acknowledge that this is the Almighty's hand? I made Corbyn lose the election. I deposed him from the Labour leadership. I produced the report that disgraced him and his legacy. I've now taken the whip away from him. What more do you need to see that I'm in control? How do I show you my hand, says the Almighty, that you should have the ultimate complete faith in me? At what point do we recognize that this is miraculous? I say it's the 14th of Kislev because this is coming up. We're almost a year uh, since the election. The 14th of Kislev this year falls on the 30th of November. I've spoken about it and written about it in the past. 30th of November, the 14th of Kislev is Purim Anglia, just like Purim that we had back in Persia. There were many Purims that have been celebrated by communities across the globe for little miracles that they experienced. This is a great miracle. This is a great miracle that we need to remember and recall and acknowledge and have gratitude to the Almighty and tell our children and grandchildren about for generations. The 30th of November this year, the 14th of Kislev, Purim Anglia, I invite you, please celebrate with me this year. It may be a virtual celebration, but it's a celebration, it's a recognition that the Almighty is in control. And friends, in every aspect of our lives, there are two things that you need to know throughout your life. Number one, you need to recognize that God is in control. You need to recognize God's providence. You need to recognize that God is leading you every step along the way. But number two, no matter whether you recognize it or you fail to recognize it, God is your father and he will continue to send miracles into your life. He will send you that car. He will send you that boat. He will send you that, that chopper. And if need be, he will send you that search and rescue to revive you even when we make the wrong decisions and fail to recognize the Almighty's hand. May you recognize the miracles throughout your life and may our Father in Heaven continue to guide you every step of the way no matter uh, the decisions we make for better or for, or for worse. Shabbat Shalom.